So, what we promised in the last podcast is we will speak about the um, bad guys, right? The scammers, the liars, Scammer. the cheaters. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, let's start from you. Do you have some experience with them? Um, I mean, I think if you're in Egypt long enough, pretty much anyone will. Even the Egyptians themselves will have experience with this. Mm, okay. I can you have some details details? Well, I mean, it's like different kinds of of uh levels of scammers here. Uh my uh first uh, Egyptian husband is a fine example. Only uh he didn't really scam me because I'm unscammable. I think we talked about that before because uh, I don't have like a job and I planned on staying in Egypt and not immigrating him to America and uh you know so i he got nothing from me but he tried he tried he portrayed himself as one way and then after you know we got married he did like a 360 and was like a completely different person and all he cared about was you know using me to go to america and his exact words were you are american it's easy for you you go to america you get the job you buy house you buy car and then bring me it's okay it's easy for you no okay. it's not like that <laughs> it is not easy because i'm american okay it's it's like they some some egyptians uh, and other people around the world seem to think there's like this giant misconception and it's exactly what it is that there's like this american dream and if you can just set foot in america then you have like endless opportunities and that is so far so far from the truth yeah. and the grass is not always greener on the other side i could see how they would think that but there's a very different you know reality not all americans are rich you know i certainly am not a rich american i'm just a regular a uh, person from a working class family uh, middle class i guess you could say and you know we're not swimming in money and have lamborghinis and all of that yes. i mean if anything I, if they're looking for someone with money if they need they need to look to the uae <laughs> so when i was there wow i never seen so much money in all my life <laughs> that's true i agree with you but you know i believe that egyptian just learning from what they see in the television you know always yeah mbc2 yes. <laughs> yeah of course they're the american are always successful and to rich and everything but i believe like in the america the life must be very hard i believe that the people have to work very hard to get some success if they succeed and not everyone you know it, it, it is it is really hard and you know i was lucky because i did have um i made like um the level of income where you qualify for like medicaid and food stamps mm -hmm. and things like that because and i was working two jobs and i qualified for that okay yeah. <laughs> so it, it was it was it's not an easy life and I don't have a college degree and even those that do have college degrees you know it's a very competitive atmosphere and another note would be like if you're an Egyptian let's say you're an engineer you have a degree your degree might even be useless in in my country you might have to take like a course and get like a certificate for something you know in order to qualify because they may not even look to your your degree as as being relevant and they seem to not understand that sometimes you know that's actually uh, for me horrible you know this exactly life only about your money work money work and no family no free time no time for your hobby anything not the enjoyment of the life yeah i mean i i can understand like i mean okay we have poverty in america we do but it's i'm sorry to say it's nowhere to like the level here in egypt at least not that i have seen the poverty in Egypt is some of the saddest. No, it, it is the saddest I've I've seen, mm -hmm. you know, in certain areas of of Cairo, like uh, in Baba, for example. I know I lived there briefly, and it was it's 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 really sad to to see some yeah, of the I conditions that yeah, the people live in. So you can see, like, if you're living in that kind of environment and you're struggling to put food on the table, I can understand why you know men in particular would want to do literally anything to escape that environment and try to better themselves 
it's just sad that they have to go about it the wrong way. But no, I mean, I mean it is like a survival skill, you know, but it's, it's not, it's just not okay. You know, there, there's really no. That's a good point, Amira. I wanted to stop for a second, <laughs> just stop. Uh, because what I saw, the, if someone is really, really poor, okay, so mostly these people do not ask to go out from Egypt. The, my experience, what I saw here in Egypt, the guys who go out, go out from Egypt are, f uh, for example, from the middle class or even the rich one. But the poor, yeah. the poor know. They are grateful for anything you give them. At least that's what I experienced. Yeah, I will say that visa hunters, which is what I call these men, um, it can happen in all classes of Egyptians. There really seems to be no specific class where this is, you know, warranted in. It happens, yeah, you know, with all classes. Yes, but, but yeah, especially in the lower class, sure. But I have, I've seen, you know, wealthier men from, you know, wealthy background, educated families, you know, living in a villa here that still like wanted to use a woman to go to America. So it's, it's so a dream happens. for everyone. Go to America. I think it is a dream. But you know what George Carlin said? It's called the American dream because you got to be asleep to believe it. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, to tell you the secret, even for us European, we always want to go to America so much. Except me. I never want to go there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't happy living in America. I'm much happier here. I have a better quality of life here now. Yeah. But that's only because of, you know, my husband. Uh, it, when I was living here before I met my husband, you know, uh, it wasn't that great, you know, but I still love it here. You know, Egypt has soul, and I felt like my life had purpose here. That's true. I agree. Egypt has a soul, which the other country doesn't have. They have the money. And also, you know, being a Muslim, it's not really that America is not really the greatest place to be a Muslim right now. So yeah. I'm, I love Egypt because you can be as Muslim as you want to, and no one's really going to discriminate you for it. <laughs> That's true. In Egypt, you can be whatever yeah. you want. Really. Yeah. Muslim, Christian, or atheist, doesn't matter. If you want to wear hijab, or if not, go naked. It's okay, you know? <laughs> yeah, and I always say this, you know, Egypt is, has something for everyone. And you can live any kind of lifestyle you want, pretty much. Just pick the right area. And you know what's so funny? Because always the Egyptians are telling me that in Egypt is the biggest discrimination in the world. <laughs> and I always fight with them about it. I, I mean, I, everyone has their own experiences. In my seven years here, I've only been discriminated one time. One. Mm -hmm. And that was with my ex-mother-in-law. She hated me because I was white. <laughs> yes. You know, and but not... It different. was for different reasons. It was because of you stole yeah. her son, you know, her lovely son. Yeah. Well, no, she hated all non-Egyptians. I mean, she even hated uh, this Moroccan girl that wanted to marry her other son. You know, she couldn't stand that because she's not Egyptian. Yeah, she was so, Egyptian. That's the problem. She was like very racist. But in the end, I think you're right. Like, it didn't matter who it was. They were going to have a hard time because even his ex wife was Egyptian that he had two kids with and that she mm -hmm. ran away too. So, I mean, there's something wrong with that family. Okay. The Egyptians are running away too. Yeah, you have a problem. <laughs> it's something wrong. Yes. Yeah, there's something wrong here. <laughs> no, they're just crazy. Okay. Another experience you have with uh, cheaters, liars? except your ex-husband yeah. i mean uh, one of the subject of like um like romantic scams i mean sure but i mean the biggest one would definitely be my my ex-husband but there sure were other uh, men i met here like during uh my single years while i was dating in egypt that you know were trying to sing the same song as my ex but after that experience I could see red flags like so clearly <laughs> that it never got past the first date. You know, I'd meet a guy and, and you know, it's our first date. We'll be at a restaurant. We'll be chit chatting about ourselves. And I always learned from the first date, you know, it's kind of like an interview here when you're meeting a guy for a potential marriage, you have to ask questions. So I would literally lay it all out on the table. I'm, I want to be a housewife. I want to have kids. I don't want to work. Yeah, and I'm not moving to America. And I will tell you this, 95% of the time, I never saw that man again. <laughs> <laughs> you scared him. Yeah, and, and some of them would even try to persuade me to change my mind. I, even this doctor I met one time, he was trying to tell me how 
he would make so much more money for us if I decided to immigrate him to America and how he could like have a better life. Sure. That might be true. Some maybe, but I don't want to like do that. And I'm telling them like my dream is to live here and I want someone that's on the same page as me, you know? So I didn't see him again, <laughs> you know, but the, yeah, sure enough, they tried. <laughs> yeah. You know, the question about the money, I actually believe uh, the money you can earn in any country in the world. It's just your fate, or um, how to say it. It up, up to God if you earn the money, if you'll be rich or poor, and up to you how hard work you will for you, how hard you will work for it. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm someone I don't like to work, so and yeah. I just don't like. Okay, I mean, and I, there should be no shame in that because I sure as hell don't shame women who want to work and have a career and have kids too. That's fine. Do what you want. If you want to have a job and you want to be married, you want to pay like 50-50 with your husband and you want to have a, all this stuff and have your kids and have a career, okay. But don't discriminate me because I want to be a housewife and not work and I want someone to like provide me. That's like my choice. Okay. Yes, I agree with you. I mean, absolutely. Like I believe that women should not be forced to work. Like she should choose by herself what she can afford. Yeah. Because not all women exactly. can afford it, honestly. No. And I have my reasons of why I don't want to work. A lot of it is like stress, anxiety, and I will I don't have a degree. Okay, so, and I'm someone, I didn't like school. I didn't like college. And even from the time that I was young, I always just wanted to be in a housewife like my mom. My, you know, the mm. teacher in school would ask, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? I raised my hand. Oh, I want to be a housewife like my mom. You know, she was like my idol. You know, may her soul rest in peace. And, you know, some other, the other girls are like, oh, I want to be a singer, I want to be a model, I want to be a nurse, doctor, whatever. I'm like, housewife. So I was kind of like the oddball in school. And to what, what did you answer to? I mean, I think she was kind of touched by it. This was in the 90s. So it was kind of okay back then still mm -hmm. to have that kind of dream. But I think now, you know, in 2021, it might be a different response. But no, my teacher was like, touched by my response like oh she wants to be like her mommy like <laughs> that's very that's nice sweet. Actually, yeah. because what they teach us in europe only that we have to work doesn't matter that we are women but one day we will work very hard you know and we should be independent from the men because the men are idiots that's what they are <laughs> teaching us in europe yeah i mean men are idiots not all of it, you know. <laughs> okay i hope you're so i can agree so with with that I will say this, that because of like feminism, feminist extremism, that the mm. standards for women, especially in, in America where I'm from, I don't know about Europe, I've never been to Europe, but the standards for women now are just insane. They even make rap songs about it. Like if you're not independent, you got your own house, you got your own car, two jobs, work hard, you a bad broad. Like, okay, you're making songs about like these, the men have more expectations now. I was denied like, you know, so many times in relationships, like, because I didn't, you know, want to be that person. I wanted to be the wife that the man comes home to every day and she has a clean house, dinner on the table, you know, a couple of kids. That's what I had in my mind. And that was not accepted among the men in my culture anymore because of the feminist extremist movement that had created this unrealistic image of the female. And not everybody wants to do that. But now it's to the point where if you are not someone who wants to be an independent woman, you're like looked down on. Like they frown upon that. Oh, she doesn't work. She ain't got a job. She yeah. just stays home all day. Yeah, you think I'm like staying home all day because I'm doing nothing? Like housewife does nothing. Like it's somehow deemed like this lowly job. No. It is like the most treasured, beautiful thing to do in my opinion it's something that i profoundly enjoy and i, and I take so much pride hard. yeah but I mean, it is hard it's very hard job really it's i see it's much more easier to shut the door and go to the work sometimes and to stay in the home and continue everything. girl not for me i worked in customer service and i hate people like i cannot i cannot <laughs> <laughs> okay i cannot do you know well that i'm also housewife <laughs> and i'm proud okay you know yeah well, sometimes it's easier, you know, if you leave the home to clear your mind or your head or so, whatever, to meet new people. But to stay in the house, yeah. it's not as easy as the people think. They think, okay, she's home, she's drinking nothing. But that's not true at all. We're doing all Yeah, the I mean, I have, like, 
I have like a life too. It's not all about the home. You know, I go shopping. I have friends. I have like my mom friends here. They live in my neighborhood. We get together. Our kids play. You know, I have my friends that they crochet with me. You know, I've got like my new friends that I'm always making. Actually, I just made a new Saudi friend and she lives um, in my neighborhood and I'm going to meet with her on Saturday. So it's like, I'm always meeting new people and I always enjoy it. And my husband is definitely not one of those people that's like, oh, you can't like go out of the house and you have to be a prisoner in the home. No, he's not like that. He's very social. I'm very social and that's completely fine. You are lucky, Amira, uh, because I just have a very old friend, let's say, okay, I was just shooting with her now, and she was telling me that that's what her husband is doing with her, he forbids to meet anyone, her family, her friends, she can, can go anywhere, she can go shopping by herself, so sometimes it's That's really unhealthy behavior, that's really yeah. unhealthy. But it's even And that, that's another thing that my ex-husband did, you know, and that's part of the scammer tactic too, is a lot of times when they are with a girl because they want something, they want to isolate her from like everyone that she knows. So mm-hmm. those people can't like tell her, Hey, there's red flags. What's going on? This isn't right. This is culturally wrong. You know, they want to keep her away because they know and my ex-husband knew if I were to go out and meet people, I would find out that my situation was not normal here. Yes, true. But do the people are bastards. I mean, are really. They yeah. Are and there's a, there's a lot of, a lot of scammers here. I mean, not just in Cairo, but I would say like the some of the most well-known scammers are going to be found in the Red Sea cities. Hergada, Alguna, Sharm uh, el Dahab. These places are infested with men looking for, whether it's immigration or just cash or a woman to have sex with. Because, I mean, emotionally scamming someone exists here too you know, Orphy marriage, oh, let's get married, and then you find out it's like an Orphy, and she doesn't know it's Orphy, she doesn't know what Orphy is, she's not from here, she doesn't know that's a sex contract, and that's like culturally frowned upon by the vast majority of Egyptians that would never even consider doing an Orphy for their daughter, you know, she has no idea, and then he's asking her, oh, yeah, so my mom, she has like cancer, can you please send us money, because, we, you know, I'm poor, and I have like a you know, a little job here, and I cannot afford, and, and then, you know, she's, like, scammed out of thousands of dollars, and has become his cash cow, and thinks that, you know, it's normal, because in her country, that might be normal to, like, help out a boyfriend with medical expenses, but here, the men are financially responsible for the women, you know, most of the time, so that's not, it's not something normal, and these men that are doing this to these foreigner women, normally are doing it to multiple foreign women at once they they use this uh tactic as sort of like their own uh part-time job scamming women like this is a job for them okay so it's easy for them (laughs) to juggle these uh, multiple women at once and get money from them and that's how they survive this is how they live yeah it's important to be aware of these things when you're planning to visit egypt particularly if you're you know planning to go to a red sea city yeah, and, and if you're dealing with men who are working in tourism, these are the men that are the most notorious for scamming women, whether it's financially, emotionally, or, you know, for immigration purposes. Exactly. I agree, Amira. And, you know, what's the best combination if they are scamming the old women from money or getting out from each other? That is absolutely true. And this is another important thing for women to be aware of is, and I really hate to say this, but it needs to be said, it's very true. And these women need to protect themselves. But these men particularly choose, they purposely look for older women, significantly older women. They look for overweight women and they look for single mothers. Exactly. And it's not that there, there's, okay, there's nothing wrong with being any one of these women, okay? Women are powerful and beautiful no matter what you know, how old you are, what you look like, or your situation Mm -hmm. has nothing to do with that. It has to do with, in the scammer's eyes, these women are deemed the most easiest and most vulnerable to manipulate, to to get themselves the outcome that they want at the fastest way possible. That's how they see it. Yes, I agree. But you know what's the bad luck that the women actually do not believe it? They always believe that they are the exceptional one. They really love them. And if you tell them they are angry at you at the end. 
Yeah, I mean, sure. I'm, I, there's always exceptions to everything, but yeah, the vast majority, unfortunately, not. Yeah, like the ninety percent will not be, ninety five percent will not be the exception. And it's important to know your rights. You know, as a woman going to marry a Muslim man, you it's important to know like uh, what's culturally acceptable and what's culturally frowned upon. To know, you know, the norms when you're coming here so that way you know if, let's say you did fall in love with an egyptian but you should the, know that if he's hiding you from his family or something like that that's completely not normal and that's something very frowned upon it's not it's not okay well not normal is the orphi contract i really don't understand why the women are signing it why they agree on it you know it's for me i don't understand how come i think a lot of it has to do with lack of knowledge i mean most of the women i meet that are in an orphi arranged marriage like they don't understand like what exactly an oh, orphi contract is Amira, i met in the last year like uh, i swear like 100 women about this case okay and i swear they knew very well what does it mean they signed it and they was very happy for it that they can be with their love so this really I yeah for them it's like you know they think it will probably be you know happy ending and also you have to keep in mind that these women are going to believe whatever the the guy they're with is telling them they're going to believe all this stuff that he's feeding into their head because emotional manipulation is very very prevalent here with the scammer he will make her believe that oh, it's okay it's orphy but you know we are going to get married one day for real at ministry of justice and we're going to have wedding, we're going to have kids, we're going to be together, I'm going to tell my mother about you finally, and then none of this happens. And he just keeps taking and taking from her. Or maybe he's not taking anything at all. Maybe he's just experimenting sexually with different foreigner women because he knows he can't really do this with many Egyptian women. And a lot of Egyptian guys, they want to, you know, experiment, experiment out there with different women, and this is their ticket to do that. That's true. But it's very good to mention that the Orphi contract is protecting only the man, but never the woman. Like yeah, whether, it's not a real marriage. Or anything, so she is fucked up, the woman, really. She has no rights here in Egypt. Yeah, no Egyptian woman, you know, respectable Egyptian woman and her family would ever accept to be uh, into an Orphi marriage. So, it, you know, why should you as a foreigner accept something that, you know, an Egyptian national would not? Yeah, exactly. And uh, also, I hate when the boys are telling to the women that they can't marry them because it's too expensive doing and too much paper and they have to pay too much money to the government. <laughs> you know, it's always Oh, funny yeah. There's always some excuses. There's always something. You know, it's just a, you got to be aware of those red flags and you need to know you're right. Uh, you know, men here are financially responsible for you know, their head of household. They're responsible for the women and the children. Mm -hmm. And it, of course, it's normal in some you know, lesser financially privileged families where the women work too. But even in those cases, you know, she's willingly and knowingly forfeiting her rights in that marriage in order to, you know, keep a roof over their heads because maybe they're struggling or whatever. And in the eyes of God, in the Quran, in Islam, this is considered a selfless act of charity on her part. Okay. So if you're a foreigner woman and you're going into this relationship with your Egyptian with a Western perspective on it financially, you could be putting yourself at risk for financial fraud and scams and marriage fraud and all kinds of other things. You have to protect yourself and protect your assets until you, you know, at least you're 100% sure that he's in it for the right reason. Yeah, absolutely agree. You told it really very beautiful. But simply, marriage like Orphi, never, never go for it. I really... Run, 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 run. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, unless you, you, you know, you want to have fun and you're just here to have fun and you're oh, not going to okay. give anything to them, go I for it, girl. Fun. Have yourself some fun. Go, girl, you know. But <laughs> if you're, you know, thinking it's going to be a real marriage, no. And, yeah. and no respectable Egyptian guy Who would ever, 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 ever do an Orphi. I don't care yeah. how how his background is. I don't care if this motherfucker has a million dollars. If he's doing an orphan, he's not a respectable guy, at least not with you. He's not serious about you. If a, an Egyptian guy is serious about a foreign woman and wants to marry her, he will take her ass down to the Ministry of Justice and make that shit a 
official. Okay, and go to the embassy and get your paper stamp or whatever it is you got to do. He will go through all the proper legal channels to make sure that it's a legitimized marriage by Egyptian law exactly. and in the eyes of God and everything else. And you know what? I always advise the people, if you don't want to make the, like a normal marriage by the government, okay, so go to the mosque and do it in front of God, at least like this, you know, because you always in the mosque, the religion wedding, you always sign the papers that you are officially together. At least this is better than Orphi. I mean, anything's better than Orphi, even though I don't think getting Islamically married at a masjid is, is that much of an improvement, but I would have more respect for a guy than asking me for an Orphi if he asked me for that, but I still wouldn't do it because I want my rights. Of course, that's true. But you know, I get uh, this day actually get amazing email and maybe it's question on you. Maybe you can advise us something. It was actually from a man who wrote me that he was watching my YouTube videos, okay? And that he needs my advice. That his mom, which is older woman, found Egyptian man 20 years younger than her. And he doesn't know how to stop it, how to make her see what's the reality. What he will do? I mean, there's really nothing you can do. Um, if someone's already told her the red flags and she's going along with it anyway, I mean, you really can't. The best teacher is experience. <laughs> if these yeah. people are, you know, being told the red flags and they have multiple people saying, hey, this isn't normal and they're still doing it, that's because love is blind and they have to learn the hard way. At some point or another, most women go through a relationship in their life where they learn something the hard way. This is probably her learning experience. Hmm, but it's it's uh, kind of hard because it's her son Amir, you know, and he told me that he she is spending the family money on the guy, on the Egyptian guy. So he's afraid yeah, wow. about even the money of the family, you know? Yeah, I don't know what to tell him, you know, best of luck with that. But these <laughs> situations so happen all the time. When he sees that the man is using her and she cannot see it. It's really so bad. I have a lot of friends and relationships and you know, friends, acquaintances and people that, you know, I'm talking to on Facebook that message me that are in similar circumstances, you know, with, you know, either it's them or someone they know and they don't see it. They're not going to see it. Come on. Like I've been in a relationship before, like uh, years ago where I wasn't seeing the red flags that were in plain sight. And it took me, you know, some time to like get a grip and then you look back after it's over and you've healed and you're like oh I'm so stupid why didn't I see it you know everyone has that duh moment later when it's too late yeah when it's too late that's that's true when it's too late the girls yeah but then late. it won't happen again I can tell you that every every relationship that I've had that failed I learned something from it okay and I didn't repeat the same shit over and over and over. I made different mistakes with different men, but they were never the same mistake twice. Mm, I don't know what to say because sometimes I did even the same mistake twice, <laughs> so I will shut up in this case. <laughs> but you are so good at it. Everybody's different. Everybody learns at, you know, their own pace and when everyone's situation is different. We are who we are. God made us all different, so. You know, I actually don't But have all you can do is just educate women on the red flags. If they take the information, great. If they don't, well, God be with them. You know, I hope that they are the exception. I don't want to see any women suffering here. That sucks. And it makes Egypt look bad. I don't want Egypt to look bad. I love this country and I love the people here. And it sucks that we have scammers that act like, you know, a bunch of assholes. But yeah. All we can do is just put the warnings out there and say, hey, this isn't right. But you know, a lot of time the people are telling me that scammer exists in every country. And I was Yeah, say, yes, sure, different levels, exists, but you're but talking like about uh, Yeah, this is a totally different culture. You're talking about Egyptian slash Arab culture versus, you know, American or European culture. There's yeah. different levels and different red flags here that don't exist over there. Okay? <laughs> so yeah. Absolutely agree. Simply, it's our job to protect the woman. Uh, but many women are misunderstanding and they think that we are attacking them. But it's really not. We just want to help. That's our job. Yeah, we don't want to see anybody, you know, get hurt. I've been hurt before. It's not fun. I wouldn't wish that experience on anybody. And it's, it's really painful, you know, when you find out that 
you're with someone that says they love you, that they're actually just using you for something or trying to use you for something, no matter what it might be. That's like the worst feeling ever, you know, with someone that, you know, you, when you say you love somebody, you're putting your trust in them. Like you're, be, you're being vulnerable with them and they're using your emotions to manipulate you for their own personal gain. And I understand that the economic situation in Egypt isn't the best. And this is why a lot of the men here do stuff like this, but it doesn't make it an excuse, you know, to treat another human being with such degradation. But still, I believe America is a mistake of the family. If the family or the moms, especially the mom, teach the boys how they should treat the women, it will not happen this. But the Egyptians in Cameroon are really crazy about the money. That's true. That's what I see. They love the money so much and they think about the money all the time. Yeah, this is a very uh, classist country. Yeah. And that's another important aspect to be aware of. Uh, and, and, and not just Egypt, but pretty much all the Arab world, I mean, let's be real, yeah, is classist yeah, like in their own way. If, I mean, if you go to like, you know, uh, Saudi Arabia or the, even in the UAE, there's going to be, you know, classism that exists there. And classism in the Arab world is, is really prevalent and it's like a big deal, you know, and it's uh, something we don't really think about in America, at least not outwardly. So it, when you come to, you know, Egypt and other parts of the Arab world and then you're not aware that classism is like a huge part of the culture it definitely does uh, take part in you know making one vulnerable to scams because most of the people that are scamming not all but most are of the lower class spectrum because they're financially struggling mm -hmm. yeah I agree okay I have something else to add to our topic because actually I think we told all what was important. No, I think that should cover it for now, but this is probably a subject that we'll touch on again because you know, I did write an entire article about scams uh, in course. Egypt and some of the red flags to look out for. And it's, it's actually a really, really big topic. And I'm sure that this is something that we're going to speak on again because there's so many different layers and levels that go with this. And we've only just touched the surface of it. I agree absolutely. It will continue, of course. It will not be our last speech about this. We will continue in the future about it. 